Yamadou Tous, welcome to Reporters here on France 24. I'm Marco Owen. In this edition, how the tension between Greece and Turkey over seabed exploration is having an effect onshore for people who've been neighbors for generations. We're taking you to the Greek island of Castellorizo, Greek, but very close to the Turkish mainland, and right at the heart of the dispute between Athens and Ankara over who has the right to drill under the sea. Marine Pradel and Ludovic de Foucault are reporters. Let's take a look at their report. It was 7 a.m. I was just there, filling up my boat with fuel. Stavros runs a water taxi. He's been circling this island for 30 years. I saw a drone flying very low just there. But he'd never seen or heard something like this. There was music coming out of the drone. It was the Turkish national anthem. The incident made it onto the TV news. Like all residents here, Stavros was amazed. But it was only the beginning. Something else had happened. I was told that they'd thrown red paint on the flag, so I went there and that's when I saw the flag was literally covered in red paint, all over it. The town hall immediately ordered the flag to be repainted. Some soldiers came and did it right away. It really shocked me. It's our flag, our pride. It's terrible. The army's coming. You can't film here. The eastern Mediterranean is currently experiencing some troubled waters. For three months, the engine noises of military frigates, fighter planes, and the underwater echo of seismic explorations has been disturbing the tranquility of Greece's most remote island. The arguments over these potentially gas-rich waters have been heating up. Castel Rizzo is a symbolic island. From each side of this narrow arm of the Aegean Sea, ministers and army officers are eyeing each other up. The island is being presented, despite the views of its residents, as a new Greek and European outpost facing up to Turkish Mediterranean ambitions. However, on the island itself, everything seems peaceful. Maybe too peaceful for residents, who almost all rely on tourism for their incomes. People like Maria, the island's oldest resident, and her son Yorgos, who runs the Lazarakis Tavern in the harbour. From the coronavirus to political crisis, the tourists stayed away, and the family lost 60% of their normal income for the season. We have a lot of journalists for that. Media coverage of the tensions hasn't helped. I was in a big surprise mm. when I opened the TV and when I saw all these channels, they come. Mm. Because there was uh, channels with uh, journalists, mm. they make war reporters. It was journalists that was in Bosnia, that was in uh, Kosovo, that was in Libano. I spoke with them. So here is no Kosovo, no Libano. Here is Castellorizo. Castellorizo is cosmopolitan and 
European country. Like everyone here, they don't want to see their island become a front line. They see the Turks as neighbours and friends. We go to the Turks' parties and they come here to celebrate Easter with us. What's different this time? My mother said the people, the Turkish captain or the people they make job with us, they telephone us how we are. We have a good relationship. Mm. A mixed marriage, the only in Maria's memory, one that many people here see as a symbol of hope in these troubled times. Sikos is Greek from Kastelarizo. Perigal is Turkish from Kash. They fell in love and married in 2012 and are now the parents of a three-year-old boy. Their restaurants can be found on the small islet of St. George, which lies between their two hometowns. How does it feel to be in the middle? <laughs> it's a funny feeling, because my wife is from Cass. And with COVID, we're stuck on this side. Her family is over there, and we can't visit them. That's been hard these past few months. Eight months of blockage, including three of political crisis. The couple have been extensively interviewed by Greek and foreign media. How many journalists have you seen this summer? Oh, I'd say at least 50. Sure, it's a bit tedious, but I do these interviews for a reason, so that people understand that nothing stands between the citizens of Castel Arizo and Cas. absolutely nothing. However, three days earlier, the broadcast of this report on German public television in Turkish attracted attention from the other side of the inlet. On the day of our filming, Hurigul received a warning. In the current context, Turkish friends advised her against appearing on television again. Sikos and his wife feel like their story has escaped them and refuse to be used as a political symbol. In the kitchen, Sikos takes time to reflect on the solid consequences of the damaged ties between the two neighbours. All these vegetables come from roads. Normally we buy them in Cass, it's so much easier, 25 minutes in a boat. Roads is five hours of ferry, and by the time they get here, they're already withered. On the other side, in Cash Market. No one knows how to bring back the tourists and their Greek neighbours. Financially, it's a big loss. The people of Castellariso come to do their shopping in groups. Even their grocer comes to get supplies here. The Castellarisians have not only been deprived of their source of fresh produce, but also medicine, doctors and construction materials. And the Turks of Cash have been cut off from a clientele with European purchasing power. A loss for both sides with no obvious way out. For years, Adal has been working to bring the two communities together. He's the former president of Cash's junior football club, and 20 years ago he created an annual tournament between the Turkish city and the Greek island. It was amazing. These children, who hardly knew each other, ran out to the rocks under the lighthouse while the Greek children were on the boat, and they were calling out their names in Greek. And the Greek children calling out the names of the Turkish children. Our goal was to do it again every year, but because of politics, because of the municipality, the relationship has been ruptured. But we continue to give news, of course, but we never talk about politics. Friendship is stronger than politics. He didn't meet us here in this third-century Greek amphitheatre to talk football. 
His real work is as a historian, with his research dedicated to the story of the two communities who have been intrinsically linked throughout history. The Greeks lived in Anatolia before the arrival of the Turks. Historically, the Greeks inhabited this region. Up until the start of World War I, 2,000 Greeks still lived in Kash and the surrounding villages. Trade was in the hands of the Greeks, Armenians and Jews, as it was a port city. They were trading here. On the island of Castellarizo, there were around 150 Turks, mostly civil servants, custom officials, policemen, muftis or imams. They lived there as part of their work. Castellarizo existed as an island torn between two powers all through the 20th century. A rich port under Ottoman authority, in 1915 it was taken by France under shelling by Ottoman forces. Castellarizo became Chateau Rouge, an outpost leading to the Levant and the French colonial empire. In 1921, France ceded the island to Italy, and it became Castel Rosso over the fascist era. In 1947, after a brief British occupation, Castellarizzo was given to Greece by the Treaty of Paris, which provided for the demilitarization of all Dodecanese islands. Stavros, the taxi boat driver, loved to show off this strategic heritage to tourists in more normal times. During the war, this is where the Italians unloaded their weapons and they brought them all the way up using this road built by the French. The border's just there. From this side, it's Turkey. From the other, it's Castellarizzo. And that's the island of Strongeli. Stavros takes us around a seemingly deserted rock to the south of the island, even closer to the Turkish coast. That's a military island. Only the army has the right to go there. There are rumors of hidden cameras in the rocks. I asked the army for permission to take the tour. They said we were only allowed to stay at sea and film from afar. Only fishermen do not need a permit to cast their lines in the area around the island. A bite. I cut on board the Evangelos. Yay! Small tuna, small tuna. Over the past few months, Captain Nico has become as skilled spotting warships as he is with fish. Greece, Greek one. Yes, one, two months more military boat. Because something outside the Castellorio from the diesel yeah. gas. What do you think about the gas? It's better not have nothing, because if you don't have nothing, it's required. Everywhere, if you have gas, oil, big problem. Everyone going like the, you know. For the second time in three months, the Turkish seismic exploration vessel Oruç Reis has returned to the south of Castellarizo, inside the economic exclusion zone claimed by Greece. The deputy mayor learned about it this morning through a navtex, or a navigation telex, issued by maritime authorities. We receive navtex every day. And with the Turkish sailors coming closer to our island every time, it makes us nervous. We're tired of this harassment. But know that we have the means to protect the island and defend ourselves. Is the military presence in Castellarizo, has it become bigger this summer than it was before? 
Yes. Yes, there are more of them. That's why I'm telling you that we have the means to feel secure. But I can't tell you anything more about that. This militarization of the island, which Turkey claims has broken an agreement signed in 1947 between the two nations, remains taboo. Here it's seen as a necessity because the promise of European support is too uncertain. What Macron did in coming to our defence, nobody else has done it. If the whole EU was like him, we wouldn't have a problem. He has one final anecdote to round off the interview. Let me tell you something. I just got a call from Thessalonica. They're sending us a delivery of paint so we can fix up our Greek flags on the rocks. They can send more drones, you are ready. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a few pots of paint against the ambitions of the Turkish president. A show of force that the mayor knows is laughable. But like him, the islanders are keen to demonstrate their peaceful intentions. Of course, we must pray for Greece. But Greece is in Europe, and Europe was created for peace. Not only within its borders, but also with neighboring countries. So yes, we say that there is hope. Two hundred and fifty kilometers from there, south of Castellarizzo, the seismic exploration vessel Oritres is still searching for gas under the ground of the Mediterranean. And that's it for this edition of Reporters. You can, of course, see it again via our website, france24.com. Stay with us. Most of all, stay safe. <laughs>